So with the inflation numbers, or the, should I say the CPI numbers, the different between inflation and CPI, with the CPI numbers coming out uh, overnight in the US, uh, I thought it was good timing to do a quick little video. Now, I did this video, inflation warning, what's better, silver or gold, a little while ago. I'll put a link in the description below. If you haven't watched it, watch it, folks. We're seeing CPI increase uh, all around the world. And in my opinion, it's only the beginning. And so you need to prepare. If you haven't yet prepared, watch these videos uh, that I'm talking about. This one. Also watch this one uh, that I did, uh, what, last week, I think it was. Uh, inflation could hit 20%. Once again, even in this video, I think it's just the beginning. But in these videos, I share the, the I guess, the change... Um, that's happened between monetary and fiscal and, and what this all means and where it's going. And once again, if you want to get a true definition of inflation, uh, I've, di I've done a video um, about that. And I'll put a link in the description below on that. Because to be honest, modern economics, uh, the media, uh, they don't understand what really is inflation and the definition of it. And if you can't even get the definition right, how are you going to get the outcome right? How are you going to find the solutions to, uh, you know, to, to hedge and, com and and prepare for this? So anyway, guys, I'll put a link in the description below for, for the these two videos as well as my what is inflation you know, or inflation explained and, and the true uh, original Austrian economic definition of inflation. Uh, anyway, let's get into the video. All right, thanks, Lynn Alden, for the chart. So inflation, or CPI, sorry, uh, came in at 5% uh, year on year. Uh, is it transitory? Uh, or as George Gammon said the other day, transient. Uh, is it transitory? I don't believe so. And uh, in this short little video, I'll give my reasons why I don't think it is. Uh, but... Look at this, we've got 5% CPI, treasury rates, 1.5. I think they're actually about 1.48. Um, so what does that mean? That means we've got negative real yields of about 3.5%. 3.5%. So if we've got CPI at 5, 10-year uh, at 1.5%, at, uh, at um, then we've got 3.5% negative yields. Who would own bonds? Why would you buy bonds if you're getting 1.5% but losing 5? Moving forward, I believe the only people that are going to, if this continues, and I believe it will, the only people that will be buying these bonds will be central banks. Because why would anyone with half a brain buy them? Why? These are the deepest... Uh, negative real rates we've seen since the 1970s, folks. Since the 1970s. And and look, the markets uh, on the 10-year, you look at the 10-year and actually look across the yield, and it seems like the markets have believed that this is just going to be transitory, that these numbers are already priced in. <laughs> I think they're in for a rude shock. I think they're in for a rude shock. Now, when we have negative real yields like this, what, what's that bullish for? Gold, silver, commodities. Uh, we haven't seen uh, the price of those run up yet. Keyword yet. Next week, I'm going to talk about Basel III and what that means for gold and silver in particular. Uh, I think many of you uh, long-term or even short-term uh, silver holders, gold holders, uh, might be quite surprised uh, as to what that means. Basel III, which comes in on the 28th of June. Uh, there's some debate out there as to what that means. And I've done a lot of study reading uh, on this. And I've, I've got an opinion uh, as to where I what I think this means. Um and so next week, I am probably going to do a video on Basel III and what that means for gold and silver. 
Um, so it, it, gold and silver is just it it is ripe ripening for massive tailwinds behind it. Uh, the the price of gold and silver is going to be much much higher in the next year and the year after that and the year after that in my opinion because everything is just getting behind it and it's just got tremendous tailwinds moving forward in my opinion and just this week uh, here in Australia the Australian three year bond yield uh, in one session went up. Uh, what's that? 30 basis points. 30 basis points. The question is, has the RBA lost control? The argument is that, that central banks are doing yield curve control and that moving forward as CPI continues to get out of hand that they'll continue yield curve control, which is create new currency units, which kind of makes the whole problem worse. Um. <sighs> Luke Roman actually doesn't subscribe to the Russell Napier uh, yield curve control. Um, he slightly disagrees with Lynn Alden that uh, you know the 1940 style yield curve control keep the the, the yields low and let uh, CPI uh, rip. He doesn't subscribe to it. He doesn't think because of the debt levels today, because of the euro dollar system, he doesn't and the the amount of uh, dollars uh, out there. That, that the Fed simply cannot um, control the yield now, that central banks cannot control the yield. Uh, it's just too big for them to do so. Um, and that trying to do yield curve control will probably blow the whole currency out of the water. Um, you know, this week we've seen the, the three-year bond yield in Australia skyrocket. The question is, has the RBA lost control? Uh, do they have control? Do, do central banks around the world have control? Are they able to do yield curve control successfully? Well, Luke Groman says no, and uh, I'm certainly open to that. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not fully agreeing with Luke. Um, as you know, I'm a big fan of Lynn Alden and Russell Napier, um, but I'm certainly open to this idea and and what that possibly uh, could mean. So. Um, you know, I'll continue to do some more study and some more thinking on this before I, I actually have a firm opinion on whether, whether central banks can successfully do yield curve control or not. Uh, but the question is: Is this transitory? Is this CPI transitory? You know, they've been able to tell the markets and the media that it is that it's just su supply constraints and that's all all good. Uh, there's, there's a recent uh, article. I think it was uh, Daniel Lacau. The Austrian economist uh, might not have been. I think I think it was him that did an article. It's on the Mises Institute. You can go to Mises and and uh, and and find it and read it. Where you know they they it, it, that's BS. It, it's BS and and they've been able to uh, fool a lot of people thinking that that this CPI we're seeing is strictly due to supply constraints and and that's all that it's got nothing to do with the other side of it, which is the currency supply. Um. Now the other thing to it is, and I mentioned this in in previous videos, that that with what is happening right across the world, right across the West, but in particular in the US with the unemployment benefits. Now I know they end in September, but with the unemployment, we don't know whether they're going to continue or be rolled over, or whether UBI, some form of UBI, is going to come in because we kind of got UBI right now, right? So people can sit at home, earn more than than you know going to work, or the same. I think someone worked out it was around seventeen or eighteen dollars an hour, is is the equivalent of of working from home. So, if you're a business owner and you need staff and you need to attract staff, you need to pay them more than what they're going to get sitting at home. With the minimum wage debate, this is this is a, a quasi uh, type way of raising the minimum wage, and we've seen Chipotle just this week. They're hiking prices to cover the cost of raising wages. This is intransitory. If wages are rising, if businesses are forced to raise wages, they're not going to lower wages. They're not going to you know, turn around next week, next month, next year and just lower wages. Uh, these prices, they're not going to come back and go, hey guys, uh, the, the, the price of a burrito, we're going to drop it a couple of dollars. This is built in. 
This is now built in with the currency supply that that we've seen that the increase in the currency supply that that's they're permanent that don't then disappear and get sucked out uh sure if if everyone uses that to pay off their debts that 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 is uh i i i, I agree with that uh and accept that however that's highly unlikely to to happen um and so these dollars these new dollars have to go some somewhere and yes there are supply constraints constraints i don't disagree with that um and that's why we we are seeing cpi however I don't believe that's going to be transient. Uh, I just said it. Transitory. Uh, George Gemmon, you just made me say that, buddy. Um, I don't believe it's going to be uh, transitory uh, for these factors alone. Uh, But anyway, that's my opinion, guys. I just wanted to throw this quick video together. Uh, You know, check out my uh, videos on on inflation and, and CPI. Uh, in the description below, I'll put a few links down there um, to the videos I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, why would anyone buy bonds? Um, would you buy a bond if you got one and a half percent yield while CPI is at five percent? Yeah, would you? Uh, if this just continues to get worse, you know, as soon as people actually start believing that, oh, you know, CPI is here, people that, that psychology. And the and the things that Jim Ricketts talks about with um, velocity, all of a sudden that picks up. Jim Rick, uh, Rogers says that as soon as the economy fully opens up, all this new currency is going to go to work. Hello. Uh, anyway, next week I'm going to do a video on the Aussie real estate market and and, and Aussie economy. I'm going to do a video uh, on Basel three and what that means for gold and silver. I think you guys will be. If you share my opinion, you're going to be very happy with what that means and what that means for for gold and silver, uh, which yeah means is today a good day to go buy gold and silver. Anyway, we'll wait and see. Anyway, guys, don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, do so. Hit that notification bell. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.